Hello friends, good morning and welcome to the IDSAT Network. Our topic of discussion today is part of our ongoing series on writing in India. And friends, the specific topic is Progressive Hindi Poetry Phase 1. And uh, we shall be taking it up from here. And for this very lecture and discussion, we have with us in our studio our subject expert, Dr. Anand Prakash, retired professor of English, University of Delhi. Uh, Dr. Prakash has uh, taught English literature for more than four decades. And with his uh, skill and expertise and uh, vast uh, knowledge i would like to uh, welcome sir and also uh, request him to share the same with us uh, thank you so much sir for coming thank you urvashi uh, <coughs> and uh, welcome viewers uh, my job today is to uh, uh, acquaint you with uh, a particular trend in uh, indian writing uh, with the special reference to uh, hindi poetry but let me tell you in the beginning itself that uh, <coughs> my lecture uh, would be indirectly connected with uh, Urdu writing, uh, uh, Bangla writing, uh, some of the writings in, in, in the South Indian languages, Marathi, Gujarati, etc. Because uh, a progressive Hindi poetry in the first phase was a part of the national movement. And national movement was spread all over India. And uh, in the respective languages, the writers were uh, <coughs> uh, influenced by inspired by and contributed to the growth of nationalist, anti-imperialist struggle. And uh, since that is reflected in the first phase of uh, progressive Hindi writing, therefore, uh, it is common. It is commonly shared by all the languages in India. But I'll be taking examples and making references to uh, Hindi poetry in particular, because that's the area that, that, that I've studied a bit. And uh, let me, viewers, also tell you that uh, I have been as a as an individual, uh, you know, writer uh, involved with the second phase of the progressive writing. Uh, that that, in my opinion, starts you know with uh, uh, 1960 uh, period onwards, and uh, that phase uh, will follow. Uh, the discussion on that phase will follow uh, uh, after a lecture. Uh, the third lecture will be given uh, uh, devoted to the second phase of the progressive in the writing. Uh, <coughs> Let me uh, first introduce to you, uh, viewers, uh, the idea of progressivism, so that you know one understands as to what exactly one has in mind while talking about this trend. Uh, the word progressive is from, of course, progress, and uh, progress is uh, seen in literature in, uh, in, 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 in uh, ideological terms, that you, know, you move forward, you don't remain static, you don't uh, go back to the past for inspiration, etc. You live in the present, you are aware of the past, but you are writing something that will take you forward, forward in time, in, in time and well, so far as uh, India is concerned. Uh, forward also would mean uh, indirectly that one is moving from one language to another. So progressive in both senses, in, in, in sense of you know spreading the, 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 the uh, view of space and, and of course the time, the, the scope of time. So whatever the writer does, uh, in, in one's writing uh, is uh, committed to, is, is connected with the idea of progress, the idea of becoming better than before, the idea of you know, uh, adding intensity, adding breadth, uh, add, adding you know, a, a, a potential sense of harmony, etc. So that you know, uh, the world that we saw and inherited, that world is made better for the future generations to come. And the writers being uh, visionaries, idealists, and always, you know, uh, dreaming about things which are human. Therefore, they, uh, most of them, uh, the, the great ones always contribute to the idea of what is called progress or progressivism. So that's what progressivism is. Uh, and uh, it begins in the specific sense uh, in, in, in Hindi literature, and uh, I, 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 I'm sure also in other literatures in India, in the 1930s. Before that, we have certain elements of uh, progress, and uh, though those elements, you know, uh, contribute to the rise of the progressive movement in the 1930s, but then uh, they are not called progressive in the sense in which I explain the term here. Uh, <coughs> you see, progressive writing uh, or progressive poetry doesn't uh, start happening on a particular day. It has a history. And that history uh, is always to be kept in mind, is always to be uh, uh, you know, referred to, so that one understands the rise of the progressive movement, the, the progressive poetry 
in Hindi, for instance, uh, in the 1930s. So let's keep in mind this fact that there is a background to uh, progressive poetry uh, that, that emerged as a, as a major trend in the 1930s. And uh, I'll just explain uh, a bit uh, to you, viewers, uh, uh, the, 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 the background against which progressivism, progressive writing, progressive poetry emerged in the 1930s. Uh, <clears throat> The background, obviously, as I have also, uh, you know, said uh, in, in, in some other discussions, is the national movement, national movement that begins in the 19th century, and that is uh, uh, becoming intense, more and more intense by the day. Every day there is something that is said. Every every day that, that, that there is there is a right a leader, you know, who is saying something and, and mobilizing opinion, and uh, one can see, you know, that from 1900 onwards up to 1920. Uh, in particular, nationalism, uh, uh, you know, has, has struck roots in India in a very deep sense, and uh, uh, this nationalism is guided by certain principles. What are those principles uh, th th that we should, uh, you know, remind ourselves always? Uh, those principles would, would be, for instance, <coughs> secularism. The principle is secularism. Secularism means that we uh, refer to the reality around us. We, we talk about this reality. Uh, it is uh, it, it is factual. Uh, it, it is it, it is it, it is there uh, in, in front of us, uh, in, in in the form of uh, social relations, in the form of traditions, in the form of experiences, etc. And uh, we consider these experiences of the of the, of the, of the period uh, with, uh, with with reference to the actuality of the situation. We don't go back, for instance, to tradition and say, well, somebody you know is uh, gifting to us. Some divinity is gifting to us the, the understanding that you know we should live this way or that way. Human beings start uh, trying to understand the reality of their time, the reality of their experiences, with reference to their own conduct, with reference to the policies that govern their system at the time they live uh, the, in, in this kind of a situation. So when you refer all the time to the reality around you, when I refer to the reality around myself. Uh, uh, in, in terms of society, in terms of economics, in terms of politics, in terms of whatever is thought and, and, and or exchanged by, by, by human beings at a particular time, if, we, the, if the reference point is the actuality and reality of a time, then it is secularism. So secularism means referring to society and history and, and, and uh, confining oneself to this so that one understands things with reference to oneself also, because one is a product of of, of the social system, of the social circumstance, and uh, this product called the human being, we are all products of, uh, <coughs> you know, our own circumstance. So uh, we then, you know, understand those circumstances and say something, and do something that adds to the value and significance of the circumstance. This is what secularism is, and in this sense, uh, the, the political happenings in the country were, you know, uh, having a leap forward. From, from the earlier time to the <coughs> 20th century, and from there on to uh, a struggle that would, you know, uh, put the rulers of the day over the Britishers on the defensive. So there will always be a constant. Uh, there will always be a pressure on, on the rulers of the day uh, to, to uh, you know, uh, make policies that that, that are, uh, you know, useful for the, the citizens of the country, India, the colony, and that if th those principles are not followed. If, if, if those policies are not enacted, if the policies are not implemented properly, then, human, uh, then, then, the, then, then society and, and the citizens will uh, you know, feel angry, will feel discontented, and will express their anger and discontentment the way they have to, politically, for instance. And since in the early part of the 20th century, Gandhi's, Gandhi's is, is, is active, therefore he would, he would see to it uh, uh, as he leads the masses that you know, uh, through peaceful means, through, through a sense of harmony, through a sense of cooperation, he is able to tell the Britishers that they are wrong if, if, if they do not do not follow the policies. So this is the kind of you know, national movement that is there at that time, and uh, this uh, produced a value which was not there earlier in, in, in that form. And uh, the, the, this value of secularism, the, the, this will you know, that then be strengthened more and more as the national movement would progress. Uh, and uh, right. uh, Roshi would you like to, I, I know, yes, I know sir, that you I would like to. I was waiting for an opportunity. <laughs> sir, you talked about uh, secularism and you said that it comes with reference to 
uh, society and uh, history yes. and uh, with the secularism we also understand the idea that uh, tol keep trying to uh, uh, provide an equality to one another and also a kind of tolerance. So, mm -hmm. can we say that this idea was not uh, coming out very clearly in uh, the phase before this, uh, before the 1930s and it became manifested more uh, during that uh, period? Uh, Urvashi, actually I am talking not about the 1930s. I am talking about the national movement as a background to the 1930s. Oh, okay. And secondly, uh, your, your question is very valid that uh, it, it was not there in this form before 1900. The, the process sets in, you know, around 1900 and uh, lots of things have happened. Uh, the, the struggle, for instance, uh, you know, in, uh, from uh, around 1900 is somewhat violent, somewhat, uh, you know, uh, assertive. And uh, Gandhiji, when he uh, appears on the scene in the second decade of the 20th century, then he uh, reworks the paradigm in such a manner that ferocity and violence of the reaction to the British rulers would be slightly tempered. Right. And you know, people would, would, would start thinking. And when they think, then they'll bring in secularism more than uh, a reference to religion or reference to, reference to belief. Then they will not be, you know, for instance, talking about casteism. They would not talking about, you know, tribalism. They would not be talking about religion and one's faith, etc. They would talk as Indians. They would talk as people of this country. They will refer to their living conditions. And it is these, you know, uh, reference to the country, reference to the living conditions, reference to economic and you know, political reality. That is what makes it secular. So India wasn't this kind of a secular. Uh, you know, uh, community or a state or, 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 or a secular uh, cluster of communities in the 19th century when people were driven by considerations of caste, orthodoxy, belief, system, etc. So it is, and, and it is becoming more and more secular in the 20th century. So that this is what I meant and uh, you mm -hmm. rightly, you know, uh, given a chance to me to, to, to uh, you know, uh, uh, state this uh, in clear terms. So this, uh, this kind of secularism is at the center of the national movement and the secularism will turn as you as you as you rightly asked the question uh, into some kind of a component an important component in the uh, writing of the 1930s in poetry etc uh, <coughs> the second thing that you know uh, 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 is uh, evolved uh, in, in in the in the uh, first two decades of the 20th century in in, in the national movement is the uh, idea of political struggle so, you know, people would not generally, uh, uh, traditional people particularly, orthodox people generally would not go against the uh, masters. They, 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 they will not join the mobs on the street uh, because, you know, they would think that, uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that's not the, the, the kind of, that, that will be, that will be disloyal to one's salt. Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, translating a Hindi phrase. This ka namak khaya hai. The, 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 the oh, master who, 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 has, who has given us livelihood, who has given us all those things, we should be loyal to this person and we will not disagree with, 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 with this master. So this was the original idea. But you know in the political struggle, this idea w went into the background and people started thinking of themselves as human beings. And they would not be slavish, uh, you know, in, in, their accept in, in the acceptance of the policies that the Britishers would make for them. So it is not a master-slave relationship, it's a relationship of, uh, you know, equals, People also are workers, they also are peasants, they also are citizens, they have their rights, they have their duties of course, duties uh, can't be separated from the rights, but then they will think of their rights in very clear terms and that will sometimes uh, make them political strugglers. They, 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 they will struggle with the existing regime at that time and this was a new value. This value wasn't there in the 19th century. And uh, you know, if, if you are angry, if I am angry and if people around me are angry, and uh, all of them, you know, did, uh, agree, you know, that uh, the, the kind of anger that that, that, that one has, that, the, that I have, is, is the anger that is shared by many others in the country. And that this anger, in fact, is uniting a, a, a Maratha and a, and, 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 and a person from Bangladesh for, uh, 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 with, with somebody who lives in North India. Then, of course, a kind of unity is being established and people are becoming stronger. And, 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 and they are, they are you know, getting empowered this way. So this political struggle is happening uh, in a more and more intense form in the first and second decades of the 20th century. The struggle is always informed by uh, the, the principle of non-violence as Gandhiji would, would, would lead it. But then of course the, the, uh, the uh, rulers will become restless. 
they would think you know that these people are getting together and 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 they have they, they are strengthened by the sense of right so sense of right and getting together that can be dangerous for the rulers of a country so so imagine you know that the, the movement is absolutely non violent uh, more or less uh, <coughs> you know uh, absolutely non violent and uh, the for instance that the, there are ordinary masses who are assembling uh, at the end of this in uh, jallianwala bagh in 1919 and uh, the, the, the the assembly is totally peaceful they they, they came to discuss that they, they came to protest in a, in a in a peaceful manner and then they were massacred so this you know this violence came from the regime even though people were uh, unarmed uh, they, 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 they did not carry, carry carry any weapons in their hands nor had they come to fight there were there were women uh, you know among them and these women were the women of the early 20th century who had not been to school who who had, who had been villagers or who came from suburbs of uh, amritsar and all those things so that way uh, are attacking such a mob with guns this is what became the history for the rulers so uh, and of course as soon as this jallianwala bagh massacre happened in india as a result of the uh, you know the political struggles in the secular values that are that i am talking about that's the time you know when the message spreads all over india in a very effective manner and and people start thinking wondering as to how such a regime with which which attacks you know the the, the ordinary simple masses who are who are non violent how how would this regime Uh, look after their interests so this question you know uh, uh, is shaped in the minds of the people at that moment of time and then you know they start to start thinking and when people start thinking they they may not think you know directly individually but they get together they they, they discuss the things in their homes the word is spreading through newspapers or through tell tale uh, you know accounts etc from one part of india to another and everybody is angry that 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 you know the, the, these rulers are not just and and they, they are not sincere to the cause of the masses whom whom they rule therefore people will start thinking and this will affect and this is my you know she made purpose to tell uh, you viewers this is the effect that, that they, they would also leave on the writers of the day because these writers will write poems they will write short stories they will write essays they they, they, they will also talk to their to, to to their friends and uh, admirers all these things and the writing will be directly affected by this kind of a particular discontent in the 19 uh, uh, 50 uh, you know uh, 20 and later so uh, th- this is what i say this is the background this is where you know the, the seed is sown of 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 a kind of a critical uh, argument that will uh, you know uh, increase by the day and uh, maybe a time comes when people start thinking of progress in very concrete terms where when they talk of progress as against orthodoxy as against you know the, the the idea of loyalty blind loyalty to anything and everything uh, that, that that is served on the on uh, you know by the by by the rulers of the time so uh, for instance now think of uh, uh, i'm talking of hindi poetry now think of the poets of uh, the, the the first 20 years in the uh, in, in india in, in in the hindi heartland there is a there is a uh, great poet nationalist poet Uh, he was called the you know a kind of poet laureate rashtra kavi he was called mathur shan gupt and uh, this person wrote uh, couplets and uh, the, the book is quite long the, the book uh, i believe is about 100 pages and uh, there are couplets in it and in those couplets he is expressing an idea it, they are not dohas uh, the, 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 the the line is longer and 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 um, uh, the, 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 and he is expressing ideas mainly and he is uh, you know uh, he is calling it a kind of a uh, comment on a, a kind of cultural political or intellectual comment on the situation of the day and he is asking the people to to, to be uh, brave to, to to be courageous and, and and to be loyal to their motherland so it's uh, the, the word motherland is coming in in, in, in the, the, the the poem is called bharat bharti the book is called bharat bharti in which these couplets occur and uh, bharat bharti has lots of meanings one meaning is that india and its genius bharti can be the genius of india and uh, he is referring to genius he is he is not talking about faith he says that we, we we have a kind of mind we have a kind of sensibility we have a kind of genius and this genius is to be defined and then he defines the genius and one of the couplets for instance talks about a person who is courageous and who is proud of his nation and it is this this person who is important in 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 the times of the day if he is not doing this 
if he is not proud of his of, of his heritage of of, of his of his country etc then of course he is like a dead person wo mritak saman hai this is this, this is the kind of phrase you know that occurs in uh, mathishan gupt and uh, i think i told other, in other discussions also in poem after poem mathishan gupt as a, as a national poet started talking of uh, the the important women characters you know in, in, in his epics and uh, for instance he will write about uh, uh, lord buddha but then he will also uh, write about his wife i i think i've said it elsewhere so <coughs> appealing to the idea of the nation the idea of motherhood the the idea of women in the country and and and, and telling them to be so so strength this was the kind of i uh, don't know secularism and political struggle that that, that i was hinting at in the beginning of this discussion then you have uh, a person called hariyod then you have uh, also chayavadi poets the romantic poets in hindi and and these poets you know uh, talk not about society as much as they talk about nature but the more they talk about nature the more the situation in society also becomes clear before the reader so uh, these poets and uh, they, they talk about freedom they talk about spontaneity they they, 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 they talk about you know uh, the, the simple folk in the villages who are superior so far as uh, uh, you know the, the living and honest uh, honest living is concerned to the people who live in the cities whose life is artificial so uh, for instance wordsworth talks about the city and the village and the same thing is being uh, repeated by the the uh, you know hindi chayavadi poets who also take their inspiration uh, partly from the the, the uh, british romantic poets and also uh, uh, from from tagore who was their predecessor at that point of time and he was of course uh, around at that time so uh, chayavadi poets uh, in particular and nationalist poets like mathishan gupta and hariyod these people they you know uh, 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 educate the, the the reader in such a manner that this reader will start looking critically around him or her and then uh, the, this, this person will define things for oneself they, they will define uh, define your things for themselves and that is you know uh, is going to uh, create a situation in which things will go further ahead and that there will be progress in the writing also so nationalism of this kind it's not the blind nationalism that tagore criticized it's the nationalism that unites all people against a common enemy uh, called the colonial power and uh, it is th- 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 this kind of you know a message of uh, being proud of one's nation uh, the, along secular lines without bothering about caste or etc or or gender uh, discrimination uh, you know uh, uh, giving full chance to women to to flower in poetry to to to, to com- come into their own in poetry this is what is creating a situation where uh, people will think more and more of better days ahead because they are participating in the mm-hmm. struggle at that point of time so uh, these people have actually created a ground i'm i'm referring only to poets in this in this discussion uh, they are creating a, a background against which a new kind of poetry is going to be born very soon sooner the better so far as uh, india's you know political fate is concerned and uh, the, the atmosphere is charged in india in the 1900 onwards in those 20 years when you know people are getting together that they are connecting with one another they are writing in their own languages that they, they are evolving a new language in fact uh, uh, I, i could you know uh, also say that uh, uh, this is the period when people start using the uh, common language spoken by the masses the, the, the phrase comes from wordsworth you know talks about the common people using their own diction and language and uh, in in north india in particular and also in in other parts of the country uh, people start using the spoken idiom uh, you know uh, they, 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 uh, some of them of course right uh, they, they go to uh, you know sanskrit or go to persian for for, for you know vocabulary but then more and more people at, at this time are using the words commonly used by masses on the in, in uh, you know uh, in, in in the households uh, outside in the market etc and that's how language also is developing so hindi which is confined to a very small you know uh, uh, portion uh, in, in 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 the in the 19th century hindi the way we speak today is, is not there uh, it's there only in in a, in a slightly uh, in a different form it is becoming uh, uh, increasingly popular in 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 north india at that point of time and uh, hindi and urdu they they become you know uh, 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 they, they are more or less the same the script is different 
So, uh, Urdu is uh, taking inspiration from the common idiom, Hindi is doing the same and they are getting closer. And uh, uh, for some reason, I do not want to go into it at the moment, that you know, uh, even Urdu writers, they, they are taking to Hindi in a big way. But the, the best example is Premchand, who is a fiction writer, I have already discussed this thing. But then, and Hindi becomes a, a uniting force in India at that time. So, there are you know, the, the institutions which are founded. Uh, in, in, in South India also, which are called Nagari Prachar, or the, the, some kind of uh, you know, Hindi Prachar Samiti or Sabha, and later you know, Raja, Raj Gopalachari himself is the president of that. So, in the South, uh, Gandhiji himself is using Hindi most of the time in, in, in his speeches and in his writings. So, uh, there is a language which was not there, and suddenly it emerged uh, al along with Urdu as, as some kind of a lingua franca. So, so this is what I am saying that this is the background against which you know. They, they are some kind of a perspective will emerge very soon in the 1930s. So, from here on, I, I, I uh, you know, uh, take you uh, viewers to the idea of the formation of uh, an institution called Progressive Writers Association. So, before we uh, go forward, just a slight uh, query from my side that uh, we uh, just talked about Hindi merging as a uniting force and uh, the use of uh, very uh, uh, common, commonly spoken language and the inclusion of Hindi and Urdu becoming uh, popular. Mm -hmm. And before that we talked about uh, nationalist uh, poets, we also took one example and Chayavadi poets. So, uh, it is after uh, the time of nationalist poets and the Chayavadi poets that this kind of popularity uh, yes. was given <coughs> to Hindi. Yes, absolutely. Because you know, when people started uh, uh, reading about their experiences in their own language, then they got connected with the literature of the time. So, they, they started uh, taking the idea of nationalism seriously, of, of the love for the mother seriously, uh, of, of the love for one's culture and one's you know, conventions which were good for humanity seriously. And that is where you know the, the, this thing, uh, and, and uh, well, I will say it later, but I can straight away mention that some of the Chayavadi poets, they get drawn to progressive poetry. Right. But there are two examples, very clear examples. One example is uh, uh, you know, uh, Nirava, who is as much a Chayavadi poet as he is a progressive poet. Okay. And uh, initially he is writing in uh, Sanskritized prose, uh, Sanskritized, you know, addiction. Uh, the, the, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to quote uh, from the Hindi because viewers are, uh, yeah, they, 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 through English. But then he is using words which, 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 which are directly lifted from Sanskrit in initially. But later on he starts using a language which is totally, uh, which, which totally connects with the reader in the village, the, the literate reader in the village. And Aaj Hogi Garibong Ki Paatshala, this kind of language everybody understands. So, he starts writing like this. So, initially he writes about Tulsidas and all those things, but later on he starts using the simplest possible language. And today Nirala is recognized not as a Chayavadi poet in Hindi criticism, but as a poet of commitment and as a poet of progressive trend. Right. And uh, the second example is uh, Sumitranandan Panth. Initially, he also is using you know all, all uh, descriptions of nature and things like that. He is a proper Chayavadi poet. But then, uh, in the 1930s and 40s, maybe uh, under the influence of the Progressive Writers Association, he starts talking about the uh, about, about the village life, about ordinary masses. And in fact, one of his books, which I referred to earlier also, is, is titled Gramya. Gramya means some kind of a account which is connected with the gram, with the village. So, the, 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 that is a full book you know written by him. So, you have these two examples and the third is Mahadevi Varma. Of course, she is a Chayavadi in the sense you know that, that, that she talks about love and you know uh, uh, some kind of a bond between man and woman and an assertion of the woman. But the moment she comes to assertion, the, the, then one realizes that you know uh, the, the assertion, feminist assertion particularly in her poetry will turn into a critique of the system and the society of the time. So, she also would, would, would you know uh, inch towards what can be called commitment and progress in the 1930s. Sir, another <laughs> query that comes up in my mind yes. when you just talked I'm about… I am glad that you are asking questions. Yes, <laughs> I am also uh, happy yeah. to bring up ideas and perhaps uh, solve them uh, asking you. Sir, uh, you s we just uh, talked about Nirala who uh, was uh, a Chayavadi poet but became more uh, famous as a progressive poet and we already discussed in the beginning that secularism, the idea was a hallmark of uh, progressive poetry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
can can we uh, say that this kind of secularism was not present earlier and or that it was present but it did not come out so effectively until a certain period of Precisely. time Precisely this is the point I, th I, th I think you have, you, you have grasped it completely correctly you know in the 90th century people are not secular poets may be secular but then mostly they are writing about krishna and radha in the 90th century most of the poets you know who are called hindi poets when when they come to poetry they they, they write in braj no not in hindi for instance bhartendu harishchandr so, you know he writes his plays in uh, you know uh, in, in in khadi boli of the time which is hindi and uh, he writes his poetry in, in braj so there are those examples also but when you come to the 20th century then the same people use the spoken language which is hindi hindi is not evolved at all it's a spoken language it's not become a language it's in fact a dialect at that, that point of time urdu is not exactly a language then it's it's a language of course in the, uh, uh, it's a large it is a larger kind of you know body of writing in in, in the 90th century but it is not a language in the sense in which it becomes in the 20th century so nationalism has turned these important dialects into languages right so, so and they are learning from each other and 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 they are emerging as a trend and when you know hindi and or, urdu they, they spread from punjab uh, through haryana which is a part of punjab at that time delhi to up and and goes up to you know uh, uh, you know bihar on one side and rajasthan on the other then hindi and urdu they become languages uh, which are standardized in fact uh, at that point of time people do not use dialect uh, very consciously writers use not uh, no, not dialect then they, they, they start using it as a language so they, they will not use the local words they will use the words of uh, uh, the common idiom but their common idiom has to be understood in other parts of the uh, country or the region also so this kind of process is occurring then and 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 uh, uh, you know uh, the medium is becoming more and more standardized and linguistic right. and and language and and language like so th this is the point that uh, i i had to emphasize and uh, i think uh, the viewer the point is uh, uh, clear to you now clearer than before now uh, the important landmark of the progressive writers uh, uh, movement and progressive poetry is the founding of establishment of progressive writers association which happens in 1936 it's a formal occasion it's an occasion that uh, you know uh, is uh, uh, is marked by the presence in in, in the first uh, you know uh, uh, rally in, in in the first campaign uh, you know uh, meeting uh, in 1930 and uh, 1936 and uh, uh, who who do the two choose imagine it's a, it's it's mostly a, a gathering of uh, of the of the progressives who are committed but then it is chaired by none other than munshi premchand he comes and he he delivers the presidential address in 1936 and he is talking of a kind of politics that is humanistic in nature that is idealistic that is practical So imagine a uh, practical and idealistic they, they combine in Premchand, and then Premchand is giving a statement uh, that that will be a, you know uh, uh, a guiding principle of all progressive writing in the years to come. Even today, Premchand is quoted, and uh, one has not bettered it. One has not written better than this. Even today, the kind of manifesto, the 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 the, 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 the stature of a manifesto that his writing has, this this particular address has enjoyed ever since it was delivered. so we have this uh, formation of pwa the second point uh, i i make about this first that you know uh, it, it's, a, it's a gathering of uh, progressive writers in hindi and uh, many many of them are fiction writers and poets it is also uh, a, a gathering of urdu writers and in fact uh, one, one or two of its uh, like like uh, sajjad zahir is 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 is, is, a, is a urdu writer and a urdu thinker and an activist and and and, and he is a he is a socialist and uh, then you have uh, you know faz ahmed faz then you have dr rashid zaha so th uh, uh, she has in fact inspired lots of people to to come to uh, progressive writing and write about india write about the freedom of india write, write about you know the, the struggle that india has to wage against the britishers and uh, it's, it's interesting to note to viewers that uh, faz who is mostly writing love poetry till then uh uh is advised by rashid jahan to come to politics to come to humanism to come to struggle and and and, and change his trend of writing only about love etc and fares the young man in the 1930s he accepts the 
uh, you know, the, the, the inspiring, uh, you know, advice of, of, of his mentor, that, that is Rashid Jahan, and he starts writing the kind of political poetry. In fact, uh, Faz wrote such committed progressive poetry in his life that uh, in, the, in the latter part of his life, he was not allowed to live in, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in Pakistan. And he had, he had to run away from Pakistan and uh, he lived uh, some t for some time in India and some time elsewhere. But then the kind of realistic writing that he did in poetry, that, 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 that uh, 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 I think all of you viewers would know the, uh, the kind of writing that Faz wrote. And uh, he was one of the best voices of uh, the progressive movement. So whereas Hindi poetry of the progressive uh, phase one, as, as, as I call it in this lecture, is concerned, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, at least four people, four or five people, uh, you know, who were born in the beginning of the 20th century. The first I, I name is uh, a woman, imagine, and then that woman uh, is uh, Subhadra Kumari Chauhan. She is born in 1908, and uh, she uh, in the 1930s would be a 22-year-old young woman. In 1936, when PWS formed, she would be uh, uh, 30, 32 years. In a 36, she, she, she would be uh, 28 years, and uh, she would write that famous poem, "Who Bloody Mardani Wo To Jhansi Wali Jhansi." Uh, she, she, the, the woman, that, that that queen of Jhansi, she fought like a man. She was Mardani, and she was a queen of Jhansi. So imagine queens come out of their of, of, of their of their darbar and of, of, of their of their palaces. They they come to the streets. They, 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 they ride, on, ride a horse and they fight with weapons in hand. And that is being celebrated by uh, the, this progressive writer called Subhadra Kumari Chauhan. So this is the kind of right and, and uh, this must have inspired generations. Even today when I move around and talk to people, they might not have heard of progressive poetry in general and progressive Hindi poetry in particular, but you tell them about this, this particular poem, Jhansi Ki Rani, and they will straight away say, yes, we have read it. And in fact, there are recitations in schools and colleges even today about this poem. This poem has been translated into uh, various languages and also in English. And uh, well, uh, there it is, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of writing, you know, that, that, that must have inspired generations, uh, as I suggested. The other people, you know, who were born in the second decade and who were all uh, young people, uh, they had passed through their form formative period in the 1920s and they had uh, taken to uh, in, in a big way. Uh, to 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 uh, progressive poetry are people like uh, uh, well Nerala of course Nerala came to uh, progressive writing uh, immediately in the 1930s. Then you have a, a gentleman called Shamsher Bahadur Singh. He is as much of Hindi as he is of Urdu. His, his background is Urdu, and he has written uh, critically on on, on on Urdu poetry. Uh, and and uh, you know he has admired you know the, the voices of uh, Urdu poets. He is a, a great admirer of Ghalib, for instance. He worked with uh, Faz Ahmed Faz. He, he also, uh, you know, uh, wrote about Hali, who was a disciple of uh, Ghalib uh, in his own time, a younger uh, you know, person than Ghalib. And uh, he, he, he wrote a critique of uh, Hali's poem, which is called Musaddas. And Hali came from Haryana, Panipat. And uh, the, uh, uh, Shamsher says, you know, that the future of uh, progressive poetry and uh, any meaningful poetry lies in a combination of Hindi and Urdu. So this is the kind of uh, you know person, and he himself writes in so many different styles. For instance, he is a very difficult poet. Uh, some 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 you know critics have called him a poet's poet, and a poet's poet cannot be you know a, a, a progressive poet because he should use the simple language. But then this person uses both. In some poems he is very simple, in others he is very complex. But then the word is complex. It's, it's, not, it's not obscure. He, he doesn't write, you know, in order to impress people that he knows this word or, or, or this language. He writes to communicate. And if the idea is difficult, then he, he edits it in such a manner, the expression in such a manner, that the, the, the crux of the uh, theme of the poem is conveyed effectively. So uh, uh, one, one can read his difficult poetry. It, it may be, uh, for instance, in the, one of the poems he says, Ek neela dharia baras raha. Now it's a difficult poem. How, how, do, how does a river, you know, you, you know, uh, 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 be, be, be like a rain? But, but, but then he is saying this, and if you focus upon this, then you realize that he is talking about a scene, where something is visualized as something else. 
And, but, but you know, generally he writes about, uh, sometimes he also writes very simple stuff, but then he, he, his vision is that of a progressive poet. He's, he's talking about the, the actual uh, you know, scene in front of him. It can be a rock, uh, the, it, it can be a plant, uh, it, it can be an, an image of a person. And uh, well, uh, some of the poems of uh, uh, his uh, are, are you know, addressed as letters to his, his, his fellow poets. And then he's talking about their poetry in his poems. So imagine that. And everywhere, he's talking of the worker, the peasant, etc. Sometimes he, there, is, there is a strike in a, in, in a Gawalier factory, and, and he writes about the, 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 that factory worker also. So that way, uh, a person, uh, and, and he, he's, a, he's, he's a member of the left party at that, at that point of time. And uh, he's revered today as a, as a great poet. And this person started his career. As, as, as a progressive writer in the 1930s. So this is what is important. Uh, and I particularly name him as, as one of the first you know, in, in, the, in the progressive movement because he wrote poetry and in the progressive phrase, Gawaliyar ke majur ka hai, <coughs> that there's a kind of poem. And he's talking about the worker of, the, of, of Gawaliyar. And he's talking about the heart of the worker of the Gawaliyar work, uh, you know, the, the person who works there. Then you have uh, <coughs> uh, Nagarjun. Nagarjun, who writes uh, pure stuff, you know, that, that, that is, uh, uh, you know, directly conveyed uh, to, to the reader. Uh, he, he, write, he keeps writing till, you know, till, till his last days in the 1990s, but then he started his career again as a, as, as a progressive poet of the 1930s. And uh, the, the, uh, 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 I didn't uh, write his name in, 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 my, in my notes, viewers, but now I'm reminded of another person uh, who wrote, uh, you know, poetry just for the cause of workers in the factory and uh, you know uh, uh, and who also wrote in the films this person's name is shalendra and shalendra is known for his songs you know in, in all the progressive films that, that were made you know uh, in the 1940s 50s and 60s uh, if if uh, you you ever heard of uh, raj kapoor's you know films of the 1950s then mostly the songwriter would be would be shalendra and uh, you know for instance uh, uh, this har zor zulm ki now it, we, we, uh, people you know, generally uh, you know, use it uh, in, in order to protest against this. But that's the, actually this is a line from Shailendra's poetry. So you have Shailendra writing at that time. You have another person called Sheel who is writing at that time. And they are not making any bones about, you know, uh, about, about you know, aesthetic expression. What they do is to communicate effectively through a language that goes straight to the heart of the people. And that is what, what, what is uh, progressive poetry in the 1930s. You have Nagarjun, you have Shailendra, and you have Sheel. These are the poets, you know, who kept on writing until, until the very end about the ordinary problems of the masses. And uh, some of them, like, like, like Shailendra, they also wrote for the films, and, and, and they became famous. Tisri Kasam, you know, all, all of us would have, would have heard about this uh, particular, you know, uh, film in which Raj Kapoor acted and uh, Renu's short story was filmed. Uh, uh, S.T. Srikasan and uh, Shailendra, you know, uh, his, his songs are, have become famous there and they are not songs, they are actually poems. Then you have uh, Sahir writing at that time. Sahir also went to, uh, you know, films and uh, his, his, his poems in Pyasa, uh, etc. Are, 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 you know, are, are household names now. We, 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 we read them as, we, we hear them as songs, we read them as poetry and they are intense poetry. It is not all about you. You have Majaz then here, there. So Majaz also is redefining the relationship between a man and a woman. So Urdu poetry has this particular, you know, uh, predicament that, that they talk about relationships uh, and, and emotions and experiences of individuals. But then uh, the, the same poem in, 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 in the hands of Majaz becomes a revolutionary poem, a progressive poem. So you have these Urdu poets, uh, 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 you know, with us. And we also have at the same time people like Shamsher, Nirala, Subhadra Kumari Chauhan, Nagarjun, Trilochan, Trilochan who became uh, famous for his, uh, for, for, for his long poems, for, for his short poems, and also for his sonnets. He is perhaps the, the, the greatest sonneteer that, that, that India has produced, and he would have at least two volumes of uh, sonnets uh, to his credit. Then you have another poet called Kedarnath Agrawal, who is also the same generation. And this person, you know, was a lawyer, and uh, he, he died the other day uh, in, his, in his early 90s. 
and uh, he was famous for his political poetry. And uh, once, once, you know, I, I, I heard uh, 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 Ram Vilar Sharma, who himself was a poet. Very few people know outside Hindi that Ram Vilar Sharma also wrote poetry. But then, uh, those who uh, know, who, who have read Hindi, they, they would realize that Ram Vilar Sharma is not merely a critic, who has written mostly criticism in his life, but he started his career as a poet, and, and th that poetic career started in, 19, in the 1930s. So this is the first phase, you know, and uh, particularly uh, Ramila Sharma would criticize Samsher and would say, you are writing difficult poetry, this is not mm -hmm. meant for the masses, and therefore I don't accept it. This is what he would say. And then if somebody asked him, what is your kind of poetry then? And he would say, if I were given a chance to write, and if I had a time to write, I will write in Allah. Allah is something, you know, that people in Rajasthan and in Haryana, they, they, they sing, you know, in the villages. And he said, I will write in the Allah Chand, the Allah meter. And he, in fact, wrote uh, many poems, you know, in the Allah <coughs> meter. Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, talking about uh, the kind of uh, idea where uh, what would be easily understood or relatable uh, with the audience, uh, with this respect, I wanted to ask you this certain set of progressive writers that you mentioned, were they um, accepted uh, openly, did they receive any good response or were they uh, appreciated more after they died? I would just like to know a bit about that. Uh, well, uh, uh, after most of them were alive till the 1980s and 90s. So uh, uh, people know, uh, and in fact, they, they are they are much more known than, than others, you know, who who are given to aesthetics. <coughs> so it's it's not only true; it, it's it's in fact much much more than that. So these people inspired a large number of people, and people, you know, in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, even 60s, they would come and would, would like to hear them. You know, uh, in, in Hindi uh, viewers, we have the, the, this tradition of kavi sammelans and mushairas. So uh, poets gather and they talk to and they read out to the audience and some of them sing to the audience. So this is the kind of convention that uh, we don't find, you know, in, in, in English. But in but in India, we have this convention, you know, of people getting together, poets getting together and addressing the, uh, uh, you know, audience directly and reading out to them. And these are the poets who were always hits in the mushairas. So if, if they came, then, then you could ensure a very good audience in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, halls would be, you know, full with the audience and people would be standing outside and waiting their chance to come inside. So th not only that, the, the, that the, they were listened to, but they were a great rage at that point of time. Right. They, they were the people, for instance, some of the films would, you know, succeed only because Sahir's songs or, you know, uh, the songs of uh, uh, Sh uh, Shailendra would be there. In it. Okay. So, th so th 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 that was okay. the kind of, uh, right. and it was, it was it directly related to the national movement of the earlier times. So they carried the national fervor in, in their poetry, and they, they took it forward, uh, you know, in, in, in the sense of uh, conveying the idea of progress at that point of time. So, so that is to be considered. I think you have rightly, <laughs> rightly read this question. I have also uh, understood uh, that, that bit, right, sir. And then one, then uh, one could uh, accurately say that they not only uh, uh, sort of uh, raised the national fervor in a uh, large number of people, they ins or might have also inspired people to take up uh, writing. Uh, yes. To give voice uh, to their thoughts. Yes, yes, ob ob obviously. You know, people would write like them you know, even in the schools. Uh, th th there were, you know, uh, poetry reading sessions in, uh, in, in, in ordinary schools, middle schools, in high schools, in colleges. And uh, people would you know, take a line from there and they would develop uh, uh, th 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 that line with their own, uh, add uh, in the same manner, more lines to it and uh, present them as their own. So th this is what happened actually. So they were the craze, you know, in the 1950s and 60s. So uh, this one, uh, then I have I talked of Trilej Trilochan, Kedarnath Thakrawal. The, the point I was making uh, uh, was that you know uh, uh, Ramila Sharma uh, thought that you know uh, Kedarnath Thakrawal is a better was was a better poet than uh, you know uh, Samsher. Well, people would not uh, like to compare. You know, one is better and the other is worse, or or, or, or is equal. They they they, all, they had their own distinctive style. But then, when uh, Ramila Sharma was grilled. Uh, 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 you know, in, in the, on this particular notion of preferring uh, Agarwal to, to, to uh, you know, uh, Shamsher, then he explained his position. He said, he is the only poet in Hindi, Kiranath Agarwal, who writes about political movements. The other people, you know, bring in politics in, in, in their own fashion. But this person takes a particular happening and write, write about that. In fact, there is a poem written by Kiranath Agarwal on Bolshevik Kranti, Bolshevik Revolution. It is a long poem. So somebody can make, you know, uh, uh, can make a particular event as a subject for poetry, and then explain his position. 
That's a different kind of poetry. Absolutely. And uh, that's what Kedana Agrawal did. Later on, of course, uh, Kedana Agrawal experimented also with the other kind of poetry. And one of his collections is called Phool uh, Nahi Rang Bolte Hain. It's, it's, it's not the flowers who speak, it's the colors who speak. You know, the, 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 this, this kind of a language he, he was going to use later. But then even that was, he was talking about flowers and the colors. He was not talking about any, 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 any divinity anywhere. He was talking about the actual thing uh, that, that, that appeals to the eye, that, 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 that you know, gives the idea of the shape, etc. And uh, uh, this way, uh, Agrawal remained a poet of politics as well as a poet of sensuous details in life. And uh, I was talking about Ramilak Sharma and his poetry. Uh, this is interesting, viewers, that uh, one of the first and the, one of the most important collections of uh, 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 poems uh, that was, uh, you know, published in 1944, I think. It's called Tar Sattak, in which there were, there were seven poets, and uh, the editor was uh, was Sen. Uh, in that, Ramila Sharma um, figures as a poet, right? And he has 10 or 15 <coughs> poems included there in, in his name. And uh, apart from that, we have Muktibodh there, but on Muktibodh, I, I'm going to talk independently in, 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 in the next uh, discussion. So uh, these were the poets who belonged to the first phase of, uh, of, of uh, you know, uh, progressive movement. And all of them had one thing in common, that they would not budge from the, uh, the nature of, uh, uh, you know, uh, reaction, the, the, the nature of response. That, that, that has to come from a poet to the situation, to the social uh, conditions, etc., of the time. So all of them invariably would talk about a problem, would talk about a question, would talk about the idea of assertion, would talk about independence, and will not uh, generally express their opinion about individual experiences. Their experiences would be social experiences. So they, they, they would always, you know, push the individual experience uh, to, to the background. Uh, and, and will always say whatever appeals to a large part of the audience. So these were the emphases that the uh, you know progressive uh, writing of the first phase always projected uh, in, 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 uh, through, through itself. It was social in nature. It was committed. It was political. It was ideologically very clear, and there was no sense of doubt uh, ever anywhere. And 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 since it was assertive and emphatic, therefore it appealed directly to the reader. Now, one thing more is to be understood in this context and viewers, and that is that, you know, the progressive poetry always appealed to the audience. It, 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 it would not draw the audience away from their situations and conditions. It would always tell them what they should think, uh, how, how they should interpret their reality, what their problems were, what their task was. So, I would say that the first phase of uh, progressive Hindi poetry is marked by the, 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 this, this particular, you know, uh, uh, character of assertion of the nation, assertion of the country, uh, assertion of the exploited masses against the country of uh, uh, the, 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 the country you know, to which the colonial power belonged, plus the exploiters at home. So, so you know, that it's, it's a very, uh, uh, I, I call it very complex, people call it simplistic. I'll, I'll come to that sometime later. They, they, they call it, uh, uh, I call it complex because it is working at two levels. One, it is uh, identifying the main enemy as the British imperialism. The second enemy also is inside us, that the rich and privileged, the, land, the, the, the landlord section, for instance, in, in the country at that time, which is suppressing and exploiting the peasantry in India. So the, the, they will somehow put the two together and they will write uh, poetry, you know, which will appeal to the larger masses. So what you know characterizes the, this poetry is the uh, interest of the common person against the privilege and the rich, whether they belong to India or whether they belong to outside. But uh, it will definitely uh, prefer to attack the main enemy, colonialism, earlier, first. So th th this, this is what I have to say. I will just make uh, one or two points briefly because uh, we are coming to the close of the discussion. Uh, <coughs> there was a debate in, uh, uh, in Hindi poetry. Uh, when, when, when these poems were read and when these poems were discussed in, uh, in, in critical articles, there was a debate about uh, the desirability of propaganda in poetry. And progressive write, uh, writing always vouched for propaganda, propaganda of the best sort where ideas that you had were to be propagated among the masses and uh, in very clear terms so that those ideas could shape the feelings and experiences of the people and they would also give them some kind of a 
resolution of the problem and uh, that, that resolution uh, you know would depend on the way you know their their views would be you know implemented by the political parties and formations of the day they would not directly uh, you know intervene in the uh, political process but then they would always tell the path of politics very clearly in, the, in, the, in their writing the second uh, thing and the last thing that that uh, that i say is that uh, uh, most of the progressive writers used meter some of them started using blank verse also or or, or, or even, even free verse but most of them were using the meter which is the meter you know which uh, or the, the argument is uh, as old as uh, wordsworth's uh, preface to lyrical ballads in in 1798 that you know uh, the rhythms of life always have a sense of meter in them and the poet you know that uses that, that that meter in order to convey more effectively than it would be done in prose so and uh, these people were using me shamsher bahadur singh would use meter rarely but he would also do so he, he also wrote ghazals uh, nagarjun uh, used uh, blank verse and uh, free verse uh, sometimes but mostly he used meter uh, shankar uh, Sh- shankar shailendra shailendra always used meter he wrote songs in fact so th- th- they were using meter to great effect because through meter they could reach the masses appeal to the masses still better than they would do so but then there were people and uh, nagarjun is one of them nirala is the pioneer of uh, the, the, the free verse he, he he could use meter very well he was one of the masters of you know the, of, of the craft of uh, poetry and and he would use meter very well but then he decided sometimes to write in free verse and uh, in those days people laughed at him and uh, he was an early person he, he he became an effective writer in the 1920s and people started saying that you know he writes one line in two words and the, in the next line has 20 words and uh, in hindi you know the, the joke was that he is using the rubber chand <laughs> that he is stretching you know it, 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 like it, like rubber but then uh, nirala would not mind writing in, in the free verse uh, i'll th- uh, take up other issues later maybe uh, regarding the this use of the blank verse or free verse or whatever because progressive writing will go in that direction after some time the uh, uh, This, which which can be called a weakness that point also i'll mention here so that uh, there, there is an entry point into the second phase of progressive writing and that is that most of the progressive writing was certain about its goals and about its understanding and it would uh, not generally uh, you know uh, strike a note of self criticism it will not you know critically examine its own principles that they, they would be done at the level of one's own mind and the creative process but when one wrote then one wrote with a kind of clarity that will appeal to the masses so with this i uh, i come to the close of the discussion and and i hope that uh, some of the points that i have made uh, would be would would find you know some acceptance uh, uh, with you readers and with this i finish thank you so much sir and uh, for the uh, very interesting uh, lecture we had today friends and of course we have uh, more to follow as sir said we'll talk we talk we'll be talking about uh, the second phase of progressive hindi poetry so please stay tuned in for that and again thank you so much sir for being here today thank you friends have a great day